We are going to continue our discussion of backpropagation in this video. We are going to look at the more interesting case where J, the unit in question, is an internal unit or a hidden unit. So we are now going to derive a weight update for the case where we don't have the true output but can use the true output of all the downstream nodes that this node J in question impacts. So that's where the definition of downstream of J becomes relevant. So we are going to start with the definition on the left. So suppose J is, it's marked in the figure, J is an internal node, hidden node. Now, all the units immediately downstream of unit J are all output units. So downstream of J are output units and we are going to use whatever error those units gather to, we're going to use that to learn the weight update for the internal node J. Now we have partial differentiation of ED with respect to net J. So this is where we started for case 1 as well. We are going to do the same for case 2. Now, to do that, we are going to expand this into sigma over K belong to downstream of J. So if J is this node, then all the nodes downstream of J are given by this, these nodes. So what we are going to say is that the error that these nodes accumulate, the output nodes accumulate, sum them all up. And essentially that is equal to what this node, green node, J node will accumulate, right? So because whatever this node outputs is given as input to these blue nodes or the downstream of J nodes. And those nodes are going to use this input to predict something. And if there's an error in the input, that error will propagate to the output. And now we are going to back propagate whatever error that these outputs are accumulating back into our node J in question. So we can learn an appropriate weight update. So that's where the name back propagation comes from. There's another thing that I want to mention here. So this setting, whatever we are deriving, is for this exact setting that we have on the right. The number can be different, but we are assuming one hidden layer. And if our J, the node, is a hidden node, the downstream nodes are all output units. That's something we are assuming. That's why we are only looking at downstream of J. But this can be extended pretty simply to networks of nodes where there are multiple hidden layers. It's not that difficult. It's pretty easy. The, once you see how this is done, the same thing will follow for multiple layers of nodes. But we are making that small assumption so that we have a derivation that's simple enough for us to handle and which we can then generalize to other cases. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you have a question that whether downstream of J would always mean output node, if J is a hidden node, not necessarily in real world networks, but in this case, for this derivation, particularly, we are making that assumption. Okay. All right. So we have the differentiation of the error function with respect to neck J. Now we are saying that is sigma over K belong downstream of J. ED or net K, net K with respect to net J. Now, we are saying that ED is calculated here, right? ED K 
can be calculated with respect to this. Now k is a downstream of j, so all these nodes are labeled k. Now ed, error of ed, can be calculated only with respect to net k, because that's what it's related to. And then net k can be calculated with respect to net j. Now, there is one confusion that students always have here. How net k and net j are related? Because net j is computed in, in j here, and net k is computed at k here, and how are they related? So now that's what we are going to look at first before we go into the derivation. Now see what net k is. So net k is defined as a weighted sum of all its inputs, all inputs to the kth node, right? So that net k is nothing but sigma i equal to 1 to n w k j times input to k. I'm writing input to k and not x k j because x k j is not the input right so when you're coming from the input to the hidden layer here then this is x and this becomes net j when you're going from the hidden to the output already you have performed some operations on the hidden layer so what is the output of the hidden layer which is now the input of your output layer. So now OJ is the output of this hidden layer, right? Now OJ actually becomes the input for K, right? So now this is nothing but input to K the jth input to k is nothing but oj. Now that's where the magic happens. Because now you can see how our functions are growing complex just by using them in this particular architecture. So initially you had one sigmoid. Now you are going to take a summation over sigmoids to get net k. And what is OK? OK is going to be equal to sigmoid of net k. Right, so now you at least, you have two sigmoids. Already you have a sigmoid in net k, and now you're going to compute a sigmoid of a sigmoid, which is going to be OK. And if you have multiple layers in the network, you can see how this can become very complex very, very quickly and will give you all these beautiful shapes and beautiful decision boundaries that you can use for really complex prediction tasks. And that is where the true power of neural networks lies. It lies in these building blocks and how they come together to give you these complex decision boundaries. OK, so now I'm going to do this again because I think this is something that students miss all the time. I'm just going to go over this one more time. So net k. Net k is, gets all the inputs from its hidden nodes. The output of the hidden node, if the j is denoting the hidden node and k is denoting the output node, now that is nothing but sigma sigma or i equal to 1 to n all the inputs to k w k j where j sorry j j is the different inputs to k 
and each of these inputs are nothing but outputs of j which what it, what would come here come out here this is another where j equal to 1 this is oj where j equal to 2 this is oj where j equal to 3 right for different values of j we have different oj and that is what we get here o j times o j right then we know that o j actually it's written here we know that o j is nothing but sigma of net j so that's how net k and net j are related now we also know that to compute the next step OK is nothing but sigmoid of net K. And now ED, if you remember, is connected, is defined in the form of OK, right? So now we have connected everything. So OK is what the output is. ED is depending on OK. OK is sigmoid of net K. Now net K is a summation of WKJ times OJ, which is its input. Now OJ is sigmoid of net J. So from ED to net J, we have established this connection, which is what we are going to use in this derivation for case 2. All right, now let's go back to the document on the left. So we now can understand that a differentiation of ED with respect to net J is nothing but ED with respect to net K because ED is a function of OK, OK is a function of net K. So ED with respect to net K and then net K is actually a function of net J because net K is a function of OJ, OJ is a function of net, K, net J. So they are connected like this. So we have these two terms. On the left, the second line on the left, we have derived that. We are going to sum all the outputs that are downstream of J for how the error would propagate from J to its output. And then we are going to calculate the error there. Now, we are going to look at the second term first net k with respect to net j so now this is pretty easy because we know how they are connected right so net k net k is a function of oj net k is a function of oj so we have the first term differentiation of net k with respect to OJ because net K is a weighted sum of OJ right next we have OJ with respect to net J we know already that OJ is sigmoid of net J so we have defined it that way so we have that here OJ is a sigmoid of net J so we have both these things, we know how they are connected. Now net k with respect to oj is nothing but the coefficient of oj which is nothing but wkj, right? wkj is the coefficient of oj which is what is going to we are going to get when we differentiate only the term where oj is j equal to it's a summation of j equal to 1 to n so only the time where j is equal to the jth value that is the only term that would matter and we others are all constant so we get the coefficient of that and that is wkj okay and then the next term differentiation of oj with respect to net j 
differentiation of OJ with respect to net J, we know that it is nothing but differentiation of sigmoid. Differentiation of sigmoid of x with respect to x because OJ is nothing but sigmoid of net J. So we know that is equal to OJ times 1 minus OJ. Right? So we got all these terms here. And we get the final value to be is equal to oj times 1 minus oj sigma k equal to downstream of j delta k w k j so what is this term delta k so delta k we have defined here this third line on the left to be equal to differentiation partial differentiation of e d with respect to net k when k is actually an output node now think about what we did in case one that is exactly what we did in case one right so i'm going to go up and show you that so in case one so we wanted to compute differentiation of ed with respect to net j and in case one we computed that when it is an output unit so this and this quantity here delta k they are the same quantity right so we already solved that so that's why we're not replicating that here we are going to use what we solved we finally got this expression here right on the left on top we are highlighting that expression so that expression is what we got when our node in question is an output node which is exactly the term delta k that we have defined for case 2 so we are going to use this not do it again because we already did it we're going to use that here and that is going to go inside the summation k belong to downstream of j so we are going to use delta k what we derived in case 1 and wkj which we got for the second part of the term differentiation of net k with respect to net j now this concludes back propagation weight updates for the specific case that we discussed it's easy to extend this to other cases where we have bigger networks and i hope you can understand how the building blocks come together to make complex really really beautiful neural networks that we can use for many problems Thank you.